Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is going to be the update to the Tormentor build. Now this is a PvP build, it's a sorcerer and he's kind of Stan but he's a little bit more on the tanky side at the same time. But this is for group play, he's an aggressor, he's not meant to kill people although you can, he's mostly meant to torment shall we say, hence the title. Now I'm going to go over the stats first of all, we are in Cyrodiil of course so we don't have, uh, we do have buffs but we don't have the Emperor buffs at the moment but you'll get to see what we've got basically when you're in Cyrodiil full stop. 32.4k max health, 32.4k max stamina, so they're very even across the board. 1.7k recovery, we are sitting on, my resist fell off, try again. 2.5k weapon damage and 25k resists alongside 26k resists for physical. Now you can get more than that, but I'm going to show you exactly where they come from when we get to the sets. We put 64 points into stamina and we're using the Serpent Mundestone for recovery. Now if you're comfortable with your recovery, um, with this stone and you think you can go a little bit higher you can change your food to max health max stam food instead of Dubris Kamara and Throne. Now this with all your buffs on will push you to 35k health and almost 35k stamina so if you think you can sustain with heavies then be my guest go for it that food's really really nice and you'll hit a little bit harder and be a bit more tankier as well but look at the recovery it does go down so be really careful with that. Failing that I generally stick to this food, especially in situations where you need to spam abilities quite a lot. And there's a lot of healing going on and all that good stuff. So the choice is yours there. But also, we are in a situation where you have lots of different variations of Mundestone as well. The Serpent's very, very nice for kind of getting in quick and doing what you need to do. The Lover's very nice if you want to kind of go through the resistance a little bit and be a bit more aggressive as far as damage is concerned. Failing that, you can also go with the Lady. Now, the Lady will give you 2.7k resists across the board. And when we put all our buffs on, especially when we get to the extra buff from one of the sets, you actually hit 31k resists, which is pretty good. So there's a few choices for you there. It's really up to you, however. Depends what you're more comfortable with. We are a stage 4 vampire, of course. We're using Dubious Command Throne, as I just said, but you can change that if you want. Now, we're going to go into my house, first of all, of course, so I can demonstrate what skills do what and how they're applied, because there's nothing here to hit, and then hopefully this will make a bit more sense. I'm going to go over the skills in detail, especially for those of you that don't understand them, and especially of those um, who want to know more about the build and, of course, understand why the skills are there and what they do. Okay, one thing I did forget to mention in the beginning, of course, in our character sheet, is that we do have 2780 crit resistance, which is insane. And, of course, if we uh, impend out one more piece of gear, because one piece isn't in an optimal trait, for me at least, um, we can pump that up to about 3k. Let's get into the skills first of all, and not confuse everyone too much too early. So, first of all, we have... Shielded Assault. This is in the one hand and shield skill line. It's the fourth ability you unlock and what this does is this will rush kind of at the target. It's a gap closer and it will knock them down for three seconds. Also, you do gain a damage shield for this. It's only a three and a half K damage shield. It doesn't last very long, but you cannot crit a shield nor can you penetrate it. So you do actually get that little buffer for damage to kind of protect yourself with. It's very small, but it does count. But this is our main um, source of uh, how do we how do I describe this? This is our main ability, let's call it that. This is very, very strong, and this does do a lot of things all at once, and you're going to see lots of things fire off that probably don't make sense yet, but I'm going to get to them, don't panic. But basically it does this, it knocks the target down. I'm going to turn away from the target so that all the shiny stuff doesn't happen. But you can see there, we have a damage shield, which has just run out, and of course we gap close, so we just charge at the target. So knock down and it's damaged, that's all I'm going to say for now. There's a lot involved with that skill. Now... Streak, of course, this is in our Stormcalling skill line. It's a fifth ability you unlock. This is our get away button. So, the shield charge is to get in. Streak is to get out. It does stun enemies. It does do shock damage. It's very, very short durated stun as well if you need it. But this is your kind of get out of jail free button. Now, what you need to do is literally just activate it and you shoot across the room. Now, there is a bit of a downside to this if you think you can spam it because you can't. You basically just cast it, you'll fly ahead in front of you, and you'll see there's a cooldown in my bar there. So I'll hit it again, there's a cooldown. Now, what this is for is because the game doesn't obviously want you to be able to spam this because you should never be caught. So what it does is every time you cast it, you have a four second cooldown, where if you cast it again, it will cost you 50% more magicka. So don't spam this. Use it to get away, count down from four, use it again if you have to. If you spam it, you're going to run out of juice way too quick, and you're not going to be able to get enough back for another one. Be really careful with it. So, a little bit of a 
a tip for this one. If you wanted to get in really quick and just annoy them and then get back out again or whatever, if you were the knockdown guy and you had to try and knock him down and then get out because other people are coming in, it's getting dangerous, you can literally just do this and then get out again. It's really, really fast. Also note that if something is too far away from you, really far away, I can't shield bash him from here. I won't be able to reach. It's too far. But if I streak and then shield bash, I gather a lot of ground in a very short period of time. It's really, really good combo to use if you're trying to catch someone, especially if they're trying to streak away from you. Because every time they streak, you'll catch up with them with yours. Now, Pierce Armor. This is in the One Hand and Shield skill line. It's the first ability you unlock. Morph it to Pierce Armor. This stabs a target in the chest and it applies a taunt for 15 seconds. Now, of course, a taunt isn't normally useful in PvE, PvP in the traditional sense because you can't really taunt a target to come and hit you only because there's a player behind it unlike in PvE. However, there are many sets in the game, and many skills in the game in fact, which require a taunt to be on the target, or benefit from a taunt being on the target. This particular one applies Major Breach and Major um, Fracture, which debuffs them by 5280 for 12 seconds. So if you taunt them with this, they have weaker resistances, people hit them harder. If you're using um, certain sets in the game, some of them require a taunt on them to get a heavy attack on them to do additional damage. Others will mean that if you taunt someone, they do more damage to you and then less to everybody else. There's lots of different sets in the game. But this, for us, does have a purpose as far as our sets are concerned. But I will get to them. It does proc one of our sets and it's really, really important. But above all, this is your main spammable on your front bar. So basically, um, without proccing stuff, you just stab it. Ignore that ground effect. That's not important. I don't want to spoil it too early. Anyway, stab the target with this, reduce their resistance is very, very important. This is a main spammable for us. We need to make sure that we light attack and hit this as much as possible. Now, bound armaments. This is very important, of course, because it gives us flat stats. If you put this on your bar, this is actually the fifth one in the Daedric Summoning skill line. And while it's there, you will gain 8% increased max stamina. And your light attacks will deal 11% more damage. Now, like I said, when you're hitting the target, you want to make sure that you light attack first and then taunt after. So light, taunt, light, taunt, if you can. One, then the other, really quickly. I'm deliberately turning away from that scout team because I don't want to spoil it. Also, this is different in Somerset. It was changed. You don't have to toggle this anymore. Just for being on your bar, you'll get those bonuses. But if you do toggle it, or activate it rather, like this, for three seconds, you'll see a little buff down there. Do it again. See the buff timer there? And then it'll fall off. While that is active, any damage you block, you mitigate a further 20%. It's very, very strong. So use that in the right situation. It's expensive, but it's handy. Resolve and Vigor. This is in the Assault skill line. And you get this level 5, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's level 5. Anyway, when you unlock this, morph it into Resolving Vigor. This is a heal over time in area of effect for you and five other people. It lasts for five seconds and it heals you once a second. This will heal you more than your friends, but it will heal you both anyway. Anyone inside there will get caught and healed. However, this is not a spammable. You can spam it, but if you do, you're just going to run out of juice. Don't do that. It lasts for five seconds, let it run out, and then reapply it, if you need to. It's very, very nice indeed. Um, our main ultimate, our front bar, of course, is Shield Discipline. This is in our Sword and Board skill line, Sword and Shield. Now, this is a mixture between Emergency and Burst, because I know that sounds really weird, but this is a block ability. This blocks for free for seven seconds. Basically, you can run around like this while blocking. Perfect, right? However, at the same time, this also makes your one hand and shield abilities cost 100% less. So, nothing. They're free. So, this here, Pierce Armor, you can light attack, stab, light attack, stab, light attack, stab for 7 seconds and it won't cost you any stamina at all. Also, your shield assault, your knockdown ability, your damage shield, your, your get in quick button, this is free as well. So, you can physically walk backwards Shield charge and walk back with shield charge, walk back with shield charge, walk back with stab with this, stab with this, over and over and over. And it doesn't cost a bloody thing for seven seconds. So you can utilize both the block and the free damage at the same time if you choose to. However, there is another ultimate that is very, very handy and we're going to get to that on the back bar. Bound armaments again is double barred because we want to make sure we have the extra stamina bonus, we want to make sure we have the extra light attack bonus. Now, of course, the block bonus, if we activate it, is handy, but you're really want to be doing that on your front bar. Just keep this on your bar and you're good. Dizzy and Swing, this is our main two-hander spammable. Wrong skill line. 
First ability you unlock, morph it to Dizzy and Swing, and this will apply a really nasty uppercut to the target. Didn't crit, but it doesn't matter. Um, that will knock them off their feet. So if they haven't already been stunned by your Shield Bash or whatever else you're using, or anybody else's CCs, and they haven't been CC'd, and they, or they've just fell off of it, one of these will knock them off their feet, and it really, really hurts. So use that as and when you can, but mind out, it does have a, a charge up timer, it does take a second to cast it, so make sure you are locked onto your target, or at least following it in a straight line so your cursor is on them, otherwise you'll miss. Lots of people will do this in PvP, and they'll do this, like hell, because instead of blocking and stuff, they just jump so you can't lock them. Make sure that you focus your target, so if you are moving, make sure you keep your cursor on them at all times, otherwise you're not going to be able to hit them. It's no good you doing this, and pressing it, and then running past them, because you'll you won't connect. You won't hit them unless you're facing them. It's very important. Okay, Hurricane. This is really, really helpful, actually. This is in Storm Calling. It's the second ability you unlock, and you want to morph it to Hurricane. It starts off as Lightning Form. Now, this will put a Whirlwind effect around you. It'll do damage every one second, and it will get progressively stronger once every five seconds. It's really, really nice. The size gets bigger, the damage gets bigger, and inside of it, of course, anyone who gets hit will take their damage. Also, while in this form, you'll gain Major Resolve and Major Ward, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 5280. This is a resist buff as well. So what you do is you activate it. You see this circle around here. Anyone in here will get caught with damage. You see the skeletons getting hit all the time, every second. And it expands, and hits even harder. It goes up and up and up. Now, every 5 seconds, the damage will increase, and after 15 seconds, it will disappear. Keep that up as much as possible. It can be quite expensive, so don't overspam it. Just let it run out and then reapply it, or get it really, really close to the timer, and then reapply it just before it runs out. But you need this on all the time. Enemies close will take damage. You will get a resistance bonus. Really, really handy. Rally. This is, of course, very important, but you can change this for another skill if you prefer. Personally, I've messed with two different um, abilities in this slot. It's the fifth one in the two-handed skill line, by the way. And this one was... A little bit more handy in Battlegrounds, to be fair, because it was a bit of a burst heal. Now, how this works is, of course, you activate it, and it lasts 32 seconds, and you heal once every two seconds. And you get Major Brutality increase in your weapon damage by 20%. However, while it's ticking down every two seconds, it puts kind of a lot of health into a little pot. And when you claim it by reactivating it or letting it run out, however much it's accumulated over that time is however much you will get back, excluding crits, of course. Basically... If you look at the heal there, it's 4k, if I go on and off again, it's 5.2, on and off again, 5.9, I think you can see where I'm going with this. The longer it's active, the bigger the heal you're going to receive, up to 564% in fact, based on the proportion of time the ability's been active. So don't just spam this like this to start with and just run out of juice. Activate it, let it run out for as long as you possibly can, and then claim it when you need it. It's really, really handy. Another skill you can put in place of this is what I used to use actually, but I still sometimes do depend on situation, is Crit Surge. This is in the Storm Calling skill line, it's the fourth ability you unlock, morph it to Crit Surge, and any crits you get will heal you once every second, as long as you crit at least once a second. Situational of course, if you've got loads of people inside your hurricane, one of them's going to crit, you're going to get healed. It's really, really nice, but in situations where you're going to need a lot of burst heals every so often, I would go Rally instead. It's up to you however. Your Execute is Reverse Slice, this is insane. Two-handed skill line is the fourth ability you unlock, and this is your main Execute, as and when you need it. This is also relevant to one of our sets as well. Now, if you hit a target with this, it's going to splash and affect nearby targets as well. So the more kind of weighing into low enemies you get, the better, because you do more damage to enemies near you. However, this has a kind of sweet spot to it. If you hit enemies while under 50%, your damage will of course increase up to 300% depending on how much health they've got left. So the lesser health, the better. But I wouldn't start hitting people with this at 50% if you can help it. I have done sometimes, but I wouldn't do that. If you can get them to about 25 to 20% health or so, that's when you really want to start weighing into them because that's when it really, really starts to peak. And of course, enemies nearby will get weakened as well, so then you can start on them afterwards. It's really, really nice. Very, very simple. All you need to do is when they're low health, just light attack and then hit it. And just Always put the light attack in first, because it will proc your weapon glyph, and you'll do additional damage. Or, you can do a heavy first, and then hit it. It's entirely up to you which one of the two. Heavy, then execute, or light, then execute. Your call. Light attacks and heavy attacks from the two-hander do splash damage, as well as the execute itself, but I'm going to get to that in the passives in a moment. Devour and Swarm. I bet you didn't see that coming. Now, 
There are several ultimates you can take advantage of on the back bar. However, I have been messing around with lots of them and this one is actually my favorite overall. This one I did used to use a lot. Basically, if you hit the target with this, you'll do X amount of damage and of course you transfer their resist to yours. So this goes through their resist firstly, but then any resist that they have, you duplicate it, you copy it and you put it onto yours instead. So however many resists are ignored is however many you get. So if you ignore all of their resists and they have a 50k tank, you get 50k on top of your resists for 8 seconds. It's really, really nice. You're never going to need that amount of resistance. However, if you're getting debuffed to shit and someone's, I don't know, reduced your physical resistance by 15k, at the moment, we're going to go down to about 10. If you end up getting 45 to 48k resist and they take 15 off you, you're absolutely fine because you're not even hitting cap yet. They can't hurt you. It's really, really strong. But... Although I like this ability, I no longer use it as much as I used to. I actually prefer the Bat Swarm instead. The Bat Swarm, if you activate it, of course, you... Have I got ultimate? No, I haven't. We'll show you. You make a swarm of bats for five seconds, and every single target hit by it will heal you. Now, it is magic damage, but it does actually work out really, really nice. Let's build up some ultimate somehow. Oh, nearly there. This is what it looks like. Very, very simple. Anyone caught in here will take damage, no matter how many there are and you will heal off of every hit really 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 powerful and people normally run away from that like hell and i found it to be really really handy on this set uh setup rather even though we're not using magicka as a main resource or anything like that this does actually top out quite nicely however there is another option now, i haven't bought this because i've respect but this is an agate bubble and this will put a big big dome on the ground stunning everyone inside of it and preventing them from using magic abilities for 12 seconds if you turn this into suppression field it will actually do damage every half a second as well this is a very dirty skill but if you can utilize it go for it my personal preference however shield ulti on the front vampire ulti on the back again devouring swarm is in the vampire skill line you get it very very early on as a vampire you pretty much get it straight away just level it up make sure it's devouring swarm not the other one this is your kind of i'm going into the middle of a brawl ability you put this on shield charge straight into the middle and everyone will either scatter or die very very nice also very good to use during execute phase as well on a target because if something's really really low health and you spam bat they're going to continuously take damage while you are doing this it pressures them okay now i'm going to go over the passives and this will start to make a little bit more sense and then i'm going to go over the gear and then it will really start to make sense first of all dark magic we're not really using any of these skills at all you can if you want if you prefer to play that kind of style and you want to put dark exchange or dark deal on or some of these uh, more CC based abilities that's entirely up to you, but personally I don't use them. So for that purpose, I of course don't get all the passives. This being one of them that we do need because it reduces the cost of our magicka and stamina abilities by 5%. And this one which was altered in Somerset, which is after blocking an attack, your next magic or stamina ability cost is 15% less. So when you block something, you want to make sure you use something really, really useful afterwards. Whether it be a heal for stamina, or maybe a really hard hit, or perhaps a streak to just get out of the way. It's entirely up to you, but whatever you use will be cheaper. Daedric Summonant, of course we're not using any pets or anything like that, but we are using this ability here. So we do want to make sure we get the passives that are relevant to this. This is about pets, we don't need it. This is about pets, we don't need it. But we will take this because it reduces the ultimate cost by 15%, which is insane, especially for our sword and board ulti because it's really, really cheap. And of course, this one which increases your health and stamina recovery by 20% while you have a Daedric summoning ability slotted. We do have one, which is of course bound armaments. So the health recovery is not that helpful because we're a vampire, but the stamina recovery definitely is. Now this is a flat bonus as well. This isn't um, major endurance or anything like that. This is a flat bonus on its own, so it does stack with major endurance. Storm calling, of course, we do use a lot of these, or a couple of them at least. You need this because it increases your magicka recovery. You are going to want to streak now and again. You want to make sure you've got some magicka to use so you can get away, so make sure you get this. Increases your physical and shock damage by 5%. We do a bit of both, so it helps. This, by the way, when you deal shock damage or physical damage, you've got two different bonuses here, depending on the health of the target. They have to be 15% or lower. You have a 6% chance for either two of these to fire off and basically execute the target. So if you hit them with physical, you can get one bonus, and if you hit them with shock, you can get another. Now, of course, we're predominantly using physical. However, streak, if you go through some low health targets, you might actually blow them up. It's really, really nice. Also, of course, this increases your weapon and spell damage by 2% for each sorcerer ability slotted. On the front bar, of course, we do have two sorcerer abilities, this one and this one. So we've got two there, which give us 4%. On the back bar, we've also got another two, so that'll give us another 4%. So we have a 4% increase to our weapon damage across the board. 
Two-hander, of course, you want to get every single one of these. They help towards your sustain, your damage, and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, really nice. But this, basically here, this will mean that if you light attack or heavy attack, then you will actually apply splash damage to targets nearby. Up to three nearby enemies, and you will do 69% of the damage done to your primary. So whichever one you hit, however hard you hit them, the rest will get splash damage by 69% of the total amount. So it's really, really handy, especially if you're weaving in and out of lots and lots of people. This will actually benefit you based on what weapon type you have. We are using a two-handed maul. So we actually go through 20% of the target's physical resistance. However, if you chose to use an axe, you would apply a bleed if you're lucky. And if you use a sword, your overall damage would increase by 5%. So it's entirely to you which you use. But me personally, I like to go through their resist. I like the maul. It's really, really nice. Uh, Balanced Blade, of course. This reduces the stamina cost of our abilities. We want to make sure they're cheap because we do want to spam them a little bit. When you deal direct damage with a fully charged heavy attack, your next direct attack used within 7 seconds will deal an additional 10% damage. This is why I said when you're executing people you have two choices. You can light attack to make it nice and quick and proc your weapon glyph and then execute and repeat, repeat, repeat. Or you can heavy attack, not just to get stamina back for your sustain but also to increase the damage of the execute by a further 10%. And yes, that does also calculate up to splash damage as well. It's very, very nice indeed. So it's choice is yours. Light or heavy. Whichever one you prefer, but if you do use a heavy, you will get stuff back and you will hit your next ability harder. Battle Rush. If you kill something while using a two-handed weapon, if it's on your bar at the time, if you get the kill and blow, you will increase your stamina recovery by 30% for 10 seconds. That's really, really nice and it will help you get out of one fight and straight into another. One-handed shield. You're going to want every single one of these. They are absolutely insane. So if you don't have them, all get them as soon as possible. This reduces the stamina cost of your abilities and reduces the cost of blocking by 36%, which is really handy because you are going to need to block. Increases your weapon damage by 5% and the amount of damage you can block by 20% as well while on this bar. So, of course, this will hit harder, this will hit harder, and our block is a bit um, better, of course. Improves your standard bash attacks. You don't need to bash really that often unless, of course, you are interrupting people, but when you do, it will deal more damage and cost less. Increases the amount of damage you can block from projectiles. You will get hit from range like hell. So if you're blocking, you take less damage. And of course, increases your movement speed while blocking by 60%. So while you're blocking, you um, of course move really, really slow. But if you have that passive, you move at this speed. So you kind of just hop in a bit rather than really, really, really slow. We're not using any light armor. We're not using any medium. So we'll completely ignore these. We're using full heavy. We are doing damage, but we are in a full heavy set. Seven heavy pieces. So for that, we gain physical and spell resistance for each piece of heavy that we're wearing. So we get five, two, three, six. We also gain constitution, which will give us 757 resources back, both stamina and magicka, once every four seconds if we take damage. We also have juggernaut, which increases our overall health by 14%, 2% per piece. And we also increase the magicka and stamina we restore from heavy attacks. If you're using a staff, and you have heavy armor, you'll get 25% back for Magicka. If you're using a sword and board, or a two-hander, or a dual wield, or a bow, or anything like that, you'll get 25% increase the stamina back, based on the base that you would get back from a normal heavy. So it's really, really handy. And of course, we gain 8% increased healing received. So any heals that we get from other people, or from ourselves, are increased by 8% once they actually attach themselves to us, shall we say. Um, this one's actually quite important if you're sneaking around a lot. So steal loads of stuff and sell it to the fence. In the thieves guild and you will get this up quite quickly and then you can use this ability here to reduce the cost of sneaking however i don't really sneak around that much so that's a choice for you to kind of work in if you got the time vampire of course we are a vampire we have increased recovery for magicka and stamina by 10 percent across the board constantly just for being a vampire we don't even have to do anything we do need to be over stage two but i'm stage four all the while anyway we have undeath passive which means the lower our health the less damage we take this is insane while you're under 50 percent health you can take up to 33% less damage. So the lower you go, the less damage you take, the tankier you are, and the more opportunity you've got to kind of heal up from there rather than getting really, really, really low and there's nothing you can do. It's really, really nice when you're low health because you can survive a lot, lot more. It's really nuts. Also, you want to take advantage of this one here. This will ignore movement speed while crouching. So if you are sneaking around, everybody knows what sneak does. You hide faster in the dark, so that doesn't take so long to get to that stage. And most people move around at this sort of speed. We don't. We move at this speed. Full walking or running speed, if you like, without sprinting, while in stealth. Or sneak. You will need this one from Fighters Guild. If you kill undead, daedra, or werewolves, you will get 9 ultimate back for killing them. If you get the kill and blow. It's very, very handy. Make sure you get that as soon as possible. 
Undaunted is very, very important. If you take a synergy, you'll get 4% of your max resources back. So stamina, magicka, or health, whatever their maximum is, you'll get 4% of that back every time you take a synergy. Make sure you take them, especially in Cyrodiil. There's going to be purifies and spears and all that kind of stuff coming out because you need to make sure that you cleanse and get your sustain back. It's really, really helpful. Make sure you take your synergies. Also, Undaunted. We're not using multiple different types of armor, but we are, of course, using one because you have to wear something. For each type of armor you wear, you get 2% increase to all your resources. Max health, max magicka, and max stamina. We're using one type. We're using nothing but heavy. So we get a 2% across the board bonus for everything. It's really, really handy. Assault and support, of course. These go up as you level in Cyrodiil, or PvP, rather. So you get AP, and it contributes directly towards your assault and support skill lines. If you max these out, you get a lot of nice bonuses, but I'm going to go over what I've got at the moment because this character isn't maxed out yet. If you capture a mill, a farm, a mine, or a keep, you will actually get a weapon and spell damage bonus and a magicka and stamina recovery bonus. It says 5 and 10 here, but it's actually 10 and 20, so that will go up if you get the extra point in there. Increases the range of your long range abilities by 2 meters while near a keep. That actually goes up to 4 meters, and it's based on abilities that have a range greater than 15 meters, including your shield charge. Combat Frenzy, this is absolutely nuts. If you kill a player, you will get 10 ultimate back. But if you max this, you'll actually get 20 back. So the more people you kill, the kind of more frenzied you end up getting. And you can use your ultimate more often. It's very, very nice indeed. Especially for your block ulti. So you can just spam those taunts and shields. Support, same applies. You've got some bonuses here as well. Make sure you grab these. Increases your magicka recovery by 5% for each support ability slotted. We don't have any, so this isn't actually that relevant. But if you do max this out, that's actually a 10% bonus per ability, not 5 Combat Medic increases your healing done by 10% when you are near a keep. This is actually goes up to 20 as well when you max it, so make sure you get this as soon as possible. This will help you. And of course, Battle Resurrection. When you resurrect a player in PvP, you actually res them faster with this passive. If you max it to, to level 2, you'll actually resurrect them 30% faster than you would do normally. And make sure you res people because you get alliance points. We are an Imperial, of course. We have a 12% increase to our maximum health. We have a 10% increase to our maximum stamina. And if we use a melee attack, any of our melee abilities that we hit the target with have a 10% chance to restore 6% of our maximum health. This also stacks on top of healing received and healing done bonuses. So this can actually go very, very high. Make sure you're weaving in those lights and heavies and you will heal from them occasionally. It's very, very strong. Now I'm going to go into the gear. This can start making a lot more sense. However... Note that these gear pieces are a little unusual in the way that they're put together, but they do work together. That's the whole point. This build is made for group play. You are meant to be the one that kind of annoys the enemy and pins them down and debuffs them and all that kind of stuff. Above all, you debuff. You can kill people. You can solo if you're very experienced, but I would highly recommend you use this in a group situation. Anyway, let's start going from the beginning. Now I'm going to go over the monster set first because the rest of them all kind of intertwine. So we'll go over Tremor Scale. This is on the helmet and shoulders. Now if you taunt a target, you have the 50% chance to make a Dune Ripper spawn from under the ground and anyone caught within a 4 meter radius will take damage. And they'll be snared as well. And this can happen once every 4 seconds. So it's really, really important that you apply a taunt. Now of course you've seen Pierce Armor, which is our main taunt. Does that proc it? Yes it does. But something else does as well. We're actually using five pieces of the tormentor on the body or the jewelry or the sword and board doesn't matter which order as long as you've got five pieces now this will give you health healing taken or healing received twice and then when you deal damage with a charge ability you gain three five one five physical and spell resistance so you get tankier for shield charging stuff with a charge ability and you taunt the enemy this requires a taunt this set turns your shield charge into a taunt so, if I shield charge the target, Tremor Scout pops up. Simple as that. All I have to do is get in. So, I shield charge, which gives me damage to the target. It gives me a damage shield, just from the ability. It also gives me a resist bonus for 15 seconds and taunts the target for 15 seconds. Now, there, remember, there are some sets in the game that do additional damage to targets if they're taunted. That's a 15-second debuff right there. It's really nice. So just for taunting, you make Tremor Scale proc. Now, remember, it's a 50% chance. So when we go in, we want to charge, which taunts, and we also want a light attack and then stab. So we've done another taunt. It's going to fire. So if we get it, light attack and taunt, it's going to pop. Either way. If one doesn't pop it, the other one will. It's really, really nice. You get in quick, give them a quick stab, it really hurts. Now, the other set we're using also applies to our shield charge. 
We are using sword and board, in fact, but you can use torment at sword and board if you want. Sharpened one-hander. I would prefer impen on the shield, but I've got a sturdy, so that's absolutely fine. Of Cyrodiil's Crest. Now this gives you weapon damage, so we'll hit harder. Gives us extra health, gives us more healing taken, so our heals are good. And when you deal melee damage, remember melee damage also heals us in the red diamond passive. You apply Major Defile to the enemy for 5 seconds, reducing their healing received by 30% and their health recovery. And this can happen once every 5 seconds. So as soon as it runs out, it can be reapplied again. Your shield charge is currently counting as melee, if not your light attacks do anyway. And this can actually proc the Defile. So you reduce their healing by a stupid amount for hitting them. Now, this has got a reduced target weapon damage and spell damage glyph on it. So, if we put all this together, when I shield charge the target, I will apply major defile, I will knock them down, I will get a damage shield, I will get a resist buff, I will taunt them, I will proc tremor scale, and I will also reduce their weapon and spell damage. This is painful as hell to anyone's potential burst that they thought they had because this knocks them down and takes everything away from them. Now, if you look very carefully at the skeleton, you see he's got no debuffs on him. Let's just uh, hit him with a taunt real quick. Look at all those debuffs. That's disgusting. Now, that's just with the taunt. Now, they all apply if I shield charge, then taunt. So if I shield charge him first of all, stab taunt, look at that. Defile, reduce weapon damage, major breach, major fracture, knock down, stun, all that good stuff. Everything at once. And it can be applied every five seconds. Once it runs out, you can go in again. And he's stuffed. Very, very nasty. Now, of course, when you get to your back bar, once they're pinned and stunned and all that good stuff and they can't do anything, you can then start hitting them or finish them off with executes. But that debuff effect that you have, you can keep it on them all the time. It's very, very difficult for them to heal. And even if they're a Templar or something and they're using the, the Purify Circle over and over and over, every time they take it off, just put it back on them. They can't do a damn thing. So they're weakened to hell. Also, the final piece that we have to finish the puzzle off is the Asylum Maul. You can use a perfected one or you can use a regular one, whatever you want. I've gone sharpened on purpose and it's got an increased weapon and spell damage. You want to make sure I do more damage on the back bar. But when you deal damage with Reverse Slash, which is our Execute, of course, remember their health must be under 50%. The lower their health and the higher your Execute damage, the more ultimate you generate. So if they're really, really low health and you keep hitting them with this ability... You can gain up to 14 ultimate every time you hit them. So what you do is you get in. You put your buffs on, of course. You get in. You pressure the hell out of them. And then you start whacking them with this. Now, of course, if they're not going to die, you've probably just built up enough ultimate to run some bats. You can knock them down again. And then you can keep finishing them. If they're low health, you'll build up ulti and ulti and ulti. And then you can spam it again. You can build up a stupid amount of ultimate just by firing off that ability. So, to recap over the gear, we have... Let me charge this up. That's annoying. We have five pieces of Cyrodiil's Crest. We have one Asylum two-hander on the back bar. I prefer them all because it goes through resists. We have Tremor Scale, Helmet and Shoulders in Heavy. And we have five pieces of the Tormentor. Every single thing should be in Impenetrable, so you can get around 3k um, crit resistance. But at the moment, like I said, I've got Sturdy on the shield, which actually works out just fine because I can block loads of damage anyway. Now, Champion Points... Just know, of course, this does work incredibly well in Battlegrounds, which means you don't need to worry about champion points. So if you just play Battlegrounds, ignore this next section. If you just play non-CP campaigns, ignore this section. It works just fine. However, if you do play in CP campaigns, this is for you. So, first of all, you're going to get hit with a lot of direct damage. Make sure you get 61 points into here to reduce the income and direct damage attacks. 39 into crit resistance, pushing us to 3k if you impen everything. If not, it's 2.7 at the moment. Really, really nice indeed. 43 and 43 into flat resistance to physical, disease, poison, magic, shock, fire, all that good stuff. And of course, dot resistance as well, because you are going to get hit with lots of those. Also note, by the way, Unchained, if you break free, your next stamina ability is cheaper by 80% for the next 5 seconds. So use something really, really nice. So um, maybe... Bound elements or something like that to block a next incoming attack. It will be really cheap to apply and you'll take bugger or damage or throw a heal or whatever you want to use. Expert Defender, reducing the amount of damage we take from light and heavy attacks from players. 
very very important and 11 points into quick recovery increasing our healing received by three percent we have lots of healing received we have it in our heavy armor passes we have it on two of our armor sets it's really really handy to kind of buffer that also note by the way if you take this passive which you will do because you need 10 points in this tree so if you're low cps at least make sure you get 10 points in here when you resurrect another player or while resurrecting them you take 15 percent less damage it's really really important make sure you res people you get points and obviously if your team's dead then you're going to die so get everybody up 44 points into Warlord, you will get stunned, you will need to break free, reduce the cost. 56 into Tenacity, meaning that when you heavy attack, you get back an additional 12% to your stamina. Now, of course, with heavy armor, you get an extra 25% as well, so this stacks up very, very nicely. Mooncraft to increase our stam recovery. Yes, I know we're going to block now and then, but we do also want to make sure that we've got enough recovery to be able to use our abilities more often. So get this to 75, no more. Another 25 points in here will only give you an additional 1% and you'll be losing out on other areas where you could make more use of the points. One point into Befal. That's because we've got one point left and there's nowhere to put it. So we may as well get 1% of something. However, this passive is a little bit buggy at the moment. It's due a fix in Wolf Hunter. Once it's fixed, I mean, you can put up to 48 points in here and move some out of block cost and tumbling if you want, and that will make your defile really, really aggressive. However, for now, since it's a little bit on the buggy side, I put 37 points into tumbling to reduce the dodge roll cost and 37 points into shadow ward, reducing our block costs. It's really, really handy at this kind of state. But again, if it gets all fixed and it's working as it should be, then put some points into here. It'll make a big, big difference, and it's really, really nasty, especially versus healers. They hate it. 19 points into bless to increase your healing done. 21 points into Physical Weapons Expert, increasing our light and heavy attacks. We will be using those a lot. You need to weave them all the time. Master at Arms, of course, we're doing direct damage, so make sure you put lots of points into here to make sure that does more damage. And, of course, we are going to be going up against Shielded Targets. Now, we are using mostly Sharpened and Penetrating kind of bonuses from our two-hander and that kind of stuff. So we can't actually go through their shields with that penetration bonus. However, this does help knock the shields off a bit quicker so that we can get to the squishy part and really make mincemeat of them. Uh, 23 points into Thermoturge, giving us a 10% increase to dot damage. The only dot we're really using is Hurricane, but this does increase it by a decent amount, so make sure you put some points into there. Precise Strikes is not that important, but the 5% increase to the heals that you get from your Vigor or Rally does actually contribute if you do crit, so make sure you get some points into here. 64 into Mighty to give us a 13% flat amount of damage to everything that we do. And of course, more points into Piercing to make sure that we've got that extra penetration so we can go through the resists a lot more. We have our Taunt that goes through their resists. We have this that pushes through their resists. We have the Maul that will then go 20% through their resists. It's sharpened. You can see where I'm going with this. Um, medium or light targets, if they haven't got a shield on or any other protection, are really, really squashy. And tanks, you can give them a run for their money as well. So, hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of how this build works. It's called the Tormentor for a reason, not just because of the set that it's using, because it is called the Tormentor, of course, but this is meant to really, really piss players off. So, if you go up against someone who's got lots and lots of healing, or they're constantly breaking out of CCs and stuff like that, it's only going to last so long, because you can continuously shield bash them, you can debuff the shit out of them, and your group can then beat on them and get them down. Most targets, unless they're a tank, will actually go to under around half health just before you get your first burst in there. So this sort of stage here, by the time they even think about getting up, you're already at execute phase. Depending on whether they've got shields on or not. It's really, really nice though. Anyway, first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zynodegaming.com, where all the written guides are. And of course, there's a forum there as well if you want to get stuck into that. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.